Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, the stupid bear's iconic. What about it? When you think of iconic horror games, you got your Resident Evil, Silent Hill, maybe the Fear games, Outlast, Dead Space, Thunder Man. But would FNAF belong on this list as well? I think yes, it would. Despite what you think of the game, you gotta admit, this game has had a huge impact on gaming. Whether that was a bad thing or a good thing, I'll let you guys decide that one. I am not doing a deep dive in that rabbit hole. Oh, no, no. No, no. And today I wanted to kind of look into what I, I think personally made the game so iconic and review the game basically. So, and if you want to know my source for this video, that's my source, bitch. So why don't we just get into the game, shall we? So, Five Nights at Freddy's, which released in 2014 by this man named Scott. The game was made after negative reviews towards one of his previous games called Chipper and Sons Lumber Co. Was this a horror game too? He, he used that negative criticism to make something that is supposed to be scary, Five Nights at Freddy's. The game was made within six months on Quick Team Fusion 2.5, which let's be honest, Quick Team 2.5 kinda, kinda sucks, I'm not gonna lie. And in six months? Damn, he got more done than any Activision dev ever could. Now let's talk the actual game. Now in terms of gameplay of this game, yeah, there's barely anything here to be honest. It's a point and click survival horror game. You play as a night guard stationary in an office. There's a clock that shows what time it is and it starts on each night at 12 a.m. You gotta survive from killer Chuck E. Cheese knockoffs till 6 a.m. Each hour in game would last like 90 seconds and there were four animatronics. Freddy, the funny one. Bonnie, the rude one, Chica, the stupid one, Foxy, Sonic the Hedgehog. You have different ways to combat these furry robots. You got the camera, you can see from different cameras all over the pizzeria, except the kitchen. Man, some funky shit had to have gone down in there, and I'm all for it. You also have these two buttons on each of your sides. One button turns the light on for the hallway, so you can see the furry that is nearby. And the other button, well, that closes them out. Each animatronic, though, has some sort of gimmick to their character to ruin your night. Freddy is not visible on camera. Why? Same reason I haven't face revealed. You can see his silver eyes on the cameras, and if you do see him, you do slow his movements. But he isn't really a threat until night 3. Bonnie is always the first to move on every night. I have yet to do a playthrough where he hasn't. Like, dude, wait your damn turn! He appears on the west side. He moves the fastest out of all the animatronics. Chica appears from the east. She can go through into the kitchen. And what is she doing to those pots and pans? Please stop. For Foxy, you basically only need to use the cameras for him, if we are being honest. And if you don't look at him, he gets mad and assaults you. Oh, wait, did I say there were four animatronics? I forgot Golden Freddy. Yeah. This guy crashed your game if he appeared. As the nights go on, they get harder, obviously. I mean, would you expect it to get easier? But who cares, you could skip them because fuck you, Scott. I'm gonna just skip the whole game within 15 seconds. Now, if you fail to not avoid these animatronics, you get killed by jump scares. Very classy, Scott. Despite the jump scares, though, I gotta give it to Scott here. He made a really good atmosphere for this game, and it was kind of uneasy to play, even to this day. Of course, this game is showing its age because, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this game has aged pretty poorly. Now, there is lore. But if you know FNAF, you know why I'm not going to discuss that. It's the equivalent to being in purgatory. And that's pretty much the game in a nutshell, I guess. Maybe. Please send help. But with that aside, let's get into what I think made this game specifically the most iconic. Markiplier. No, hear me out. I'm serious. Markiplier. Seeing a Let's Play with 105 million views just just looks so weird to me. The whole of YouTube really contributed to this game's success, with dyed-haired YouTubers screaming at the funny PNGs. The lore, as convoluted as it was, definitely made it a big thing on YouTube as well. MatPat basically becoming an internet icon because of this game. Without YouTubers like Markiplier, MatPat, and, well, a lot of them, actually. They got this game to become a pretty quick success, and a sequel would release only months later. This game would become a horror icon, though. It built a huge community so fast. People always theorizing about the story. New releases would be hyped up within the community as if it was a AAA release. The game would even inspire fans to make their own games, too. Let's just say varying in quality. And even a first-person shoot- Who made this? FNAF would grow and have a hugely dedicated fanbase even after the mess up with Security Bridge. FNAF would even spawn books. Why? And it was all because of this dumb bear. I feel like the lore also was a huge, and let me emphasize on 
huge. Factor in FNAF being nearly as iconic as it was. The game was a story of five kids getting uninstalled and stuffed into the animatronics. Games would even try to copy FNAF's success without making it noticeable with the mascot of their game. Despite what you may think of the game, it is definitely a horror icon. Whether horror, Whenever horror games are brought up, FNAF tends to get mentioned at some point in the conversation. At least I hope. I believe that this does deserve to be considered an icon to the horror game genre as well. I mean, it's even getting a movie. Still. I think. I hope. What do you guys think? Let me know in the infinite abyss known as the comment section. Subscribe so I can feed my kids, please. And if you enjoyed, good. <laughs> Goodbye.